Okay, good morning. Uh, my name is Tim Arnold. Uh, I'm going to talk today about self-hosting um, or self-hosted media server. Um, specifically, there's one out there called Navidrome, um, which is relatively new. It's been out for about a year or so, um, and, and it's great. Uh, I'm just curious, because I, I just having a conversation before most of you came in. Um, Navidrome is a port of something called Subsonic. Are, are anybody, is anybody out there using either of those? Navidrome or Subsonic? Okay, so this is new. This is new to folks. Good. Um, great. So was anyone at the talk last year that I gave? All right. Well, if you have, a, if you have any questions, I'm going to just quick, I'm just going to quick mention the talk last year because this sort of pigeons on with that. Um, last year, I talked about talked about something called the Navidrome music server. Um, Navidrome is based; it's a it's a complete contained operating system, but it's based around the Logitech Media Server. Um, it includes a graphical front end for ripping CDs to high res, res audio, um, and it's compatible with the entire Logitech Squeeze media ecosystem. Um, and it's great. It, you know, if you're running a a decent system in your house and you have a great, very expensive DAC, um, this will control everything um, in terms of playing high-res media on, on your stereo at home. Um, I, I use it everywhere in my house. It allows you to pick rooms that you want. I have it set up so I have clients in most of the rooms in my house. I pick the client that I want and I play whatever I want there. I can sync everything up. Um, and it's great. In that talk, I mentioned this being um, an internal system for an internal network. Uh, what, I, what I mentioned along the way to that was that there is an external server that allows you, allows you to engage with all your media from the outside, from your cell phone or from a computer somewhere else. Um, and the name of that server is Subsonic. Um, today, we're going to talk about Navidrome, and I'm sort of out of, out of order with my slides. Here. We're going to talk about Navidrome, but quickly, um, just to go over what we're going to talk about today, um, a little bit about Subsonic and the history of Subsonic and Navidrome. I'm going to go over installation um, on Windows and Linux through Docker, um, and then as well, I'll just briefly mention the client software um, available for both Android and iOS. And there is an enormous, you jump onto your phones, whether you're using an iPhone or, or an Android, there are probably 25, I don't know, I'll tell you, there's probably 20 or 25 uh, client programs out there for engaging with this stuff. It's heavily developed. And it's, it's a great way to get to your personal music. Um, well, let's start at the beginning and talk talk about where we're engaging with music now. A lot of A lot of folks are, uh, subscribing to Spotify, Apple, Amazon Music. Um, these are all great places to get your music. Um, Spotify, I'll just talk about that one specifically. Anything that you can think of, you can plug into Spotify, you can bring it up on your phone and listen to it. And if you pay a little bit extra, you can get the high-res versions of it if that's what you're interested in. Um, and Spotify is great. But if you have a large collection of digital music, um, I have an enormous collection of digital music. I probably have six terabytes of stuff. I don't want Spotify. I want access to my music. Um, and the, the solution to that um, for me for over the last 10 years has been this piece of software called Subsonic. Um, and Subsonic is great. I know, I know we, you've heard of it. None of you are using it. Have you guys heard of Subsonic? No one, no one in the room? Great. Um, Subsonic is, I'm glad to introduce you to this thing. The Subsonic is a great piece of software. Um, it allows you to access and listen to all of your music from a web interface or from cell phone app interface. And it will, on the fly, from your computer at home, transcode your music from whatever, whatever it's at to whatever you want it to be at for your listening experience. If you're on your phone and you want the bandwidth to be down, you can set, up the, set it up to transcode to low quality MP3 to listen to your on your, on your phone. 
I personally have my phone set up to transcode from FLAC to MP3 192. I can't, I would challenge anyone to get in my car and hear the difference between the high res audio and MP3 192. Um, I realize there is a difference, and I'll be the first one to agree with you that there is, but in a car, I can't, I can't hear it, nor am I worried. Um, so it's only it's a great piece of software. <laughs> Questions have come up, and I, and I just want to mention this real quick. Just these are some sources for digital music. Some people were asking uh, where you can get digital music today in 2024. There isn't a lot. I don't think a lot of people are collecting digital music the way that they were, say, 20 years ago. Um, there are still a lot of great sources for digital music. Bandcamp. HD tracks, Amazon will allow you to download it. Cobuzz, if no one's tried Cobuzz, um, provides some really great uh, digital digital sources. Um, you can self-rip, and I'm including Dapile on there because that Dapile does that. It's a nice piece of software. If you want information on that, speak to me after class. I can send you all the information on the world in Dapile. Um, and then as well, there is still a very large gray market for less than legally getting audio files around the world. And that stuff's out, that stuff's out there. Um, there is a huge world of pirate music still, still in existence. Um, uh, just uh, some other options besides Subsonic, just quickly to go over it. Um, Madsonic, Airsonic, these are both derivatives of Subsonic. Madsonic is a pay version of Subsonic that, that's out there. Um, Funk Whale, Apache, Gonic. Gonic is another API rewrite of Subsonic. Um, Funk Whale and, and, and Apache, both are Linux um, servers that have been out for a long time. Um, I, I have messed with both, and they're not, I, uh, personally, I don't find them as easy to use, nor is there a client ecosystem out there to the extent that there is for Subsonic. Um, the pros for Subsonic is is there is a, like I said there's an extensive app development going on for it. Um, there is direct Android Auto integration with most of that those apps that are being developed for the phones. Um, there's a fantastic solid web, solid web interface, um, and, and another nice feature is you can create a playlist and share out that playlist um, to anyone you like. It'll generate a custom URL that you can just email to anyone that you want. So if you got a new album and you want your friend in um, Germany to listen to it, you can send it out there and it'll bring up a, a one-time playlist on their computer screen that they can listen to. Um, so it's a nice feature of Subsonic. Subsonic has some cons and most importantly on the cons for Subsonic, um, it stopped being developed in 2019. Um, the guy writing it left it to develop Mad Sonic um, which is a uh, more or less a pay rewrite of Subsonic, and, and it doesn't seem uh, it doesn't seem that it's caught on the way that he want that he wants. I've actually seen the price for Mad Sonic go down quite a bit in the last five years, um, it, and it's still a nice piece of software. Don't don't get me wrong, but the open source community ha has sort of moved on to a piece of software called Navidrum. Um, which has been around for, I guess, about the last year. And this, this is the opening screen when, when you log into Navidrome. Um, this is actually my opening screen. You log into my, my computer at home um, and listen to it. And it, it is a fantastic place to listen to your own personal music collection. I'm just going to read you. This is their definition of, of what their software is. Navidrome is an open source web-based music collection server and streamer. It gives you freedom to listen to your music collection from any browser or mobile device it's like your own personal spotify um and if you want up here and i can get i can give you guys all this afterwards this is the the github address for navidrome um it's pretty easy and, and most of this stuff is up there navidrome is a complete fork of the subsonic ipa so all of the subsonic or i'm sorry api um all of the subsonic applications are directly backwards compatible um, or forward compatible with Navidrome. Um, it, there are Linux, Windows, Mac, and Docker images all available for Navidrome, so however you want to install it. Um, it's heavily developed 
my Navidrome server was updated last night. So, I mean, it's, there's guys working on it. And it, it, there's, I've noticed the rate at which change happens, positive change, good interface changes have ha happening is about once a week, I get something different pops up. So the guys are making it better as it's uh, on a daily basis. Um, and there is a very large and helpful GitHub community for it. If you're on GitHub um, and you log in, you can leave a question if you're having some issues with something and you usually get an answer in, the, in a day. Um, so it's, in terms of open source software, it's very, very active and, and comfortable to use. Just as a quick uh, demo, I, I wasn't sure if this was gonna work on here. I wanna just bring up, bring up the, wanted to bring up the, there we go. Just gonna bring, bring up, this is their, their demo of it. So somewhere out in the world is a computer with this running. Um, and it, it will transcode, start the music running. Um, and you guys aren't seeing the screen, sorry. You know, you can listen to everything on, on the go. I will just, since we're here, I'm just gonna quick, quickly show you mine. I don't know if I'm getting out. Well, I'm not going to get hung up on that. But that's just a quick demo, and I'm going to come back to that because it's a nice piece of um, – it's a nice web interface that they have for it. And as well, there there are – these are just quick exploded views of the, the Google Play Store and the, and the Apple um, the Apple App Store. Um, this is just a quick selection of, of the number of client software that available for it. Um, I'll just point out, this is one I recently started using Tempo. It seems to be the best one at the moment. It's not on either of these stores. It, it's a it's a GitHub project, and they're doing some really cool things with it. Um, but you could spend all day trying these out. And like I said, I've been using these for this stuff for over, over 10 years and, and they're all great. And I, I changed the client that I'm using probably once every six months. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry? This work on Amazon Plus. Um, in, in terms of connecting Alexa control, meaning saying, Alexa, play, Whatever, I, I don't believe it's integrated with like that. Um, I'm, in fact, I'm pretty sure it's not. I, I, I don't personally use an Amazon Alexa, so I, I'm not sure. Have you seen, seen any of that stuff? Generally, no. no. It, generally, Alexa is not compatible. Yeah. But there are tricks. I know. What, last year, that, that exact question came up um, with Dafile, with LogiTech Media Server. And I, I know that Logitech Media Server for years has been going back and forth with Amazon. There, there, there is an Amazon skill developed for Logitech Media Server. It doesn't, I've never seen it work right. I've never seen it, people sort of struggle. Because Amazon doesn't want you, I mean, this is my argument, this is an editorial. Amazon doesn't want you to do this with, with they want you to listen to Amazon Music um, and pay for it. Yeah. Um, but, all, all, all of these clients, like I, I use um, the Subsonic music. Subsonic has a brand, that branded phone client that's that's out there on the Play Store. I use that on my Amazon Fire Stick. Um, I have it side loaded into the Fire Stick in my bedroom, so I control my bedroom stereo through my through the TV in my bedroom um, to listen to it. But that's not. That's not playing through Amazon. I'm just using the remote control, using it as a remote control um, for it. But it it works. Um, I, and I said, like I said, these are these are just a sampling of the stuff that's out there. And uh, and to be quite honest, these are the ones that I have the right experience. With. That's why I, that's why I put them in the list. The ones that I like. The, like I said, most if you get into playing with this stuff, the best ones, the moment I think is kind of 
Um, although Tempo's Android Auto integration is in development. It's the best way that I can say it's not the greatest. I know that they have all of them are hit or miss in terms of Android integration. You have to kind of play with that and see which is which is out there. Um, if that's your if that's where you're using this, and a lot a lot of people, myself included, are using this stuff in the car. Um, just as a, I'm, I'm just going to now talk about installation, and I, I'm going to run run through this as, as quickly as possible. Uh, um, I don't want to bore you guys to tears on the installation stuff, but there are just some hurdles that I needed to get through. First, the first hurdle, the most important hurdle that that I had to with it was using Docker. Is, that, is anyone familiar with Docker in here? Are you guys you, outside using it? Any, anybody using a containerized software at all? Uh, Snap, Kubernetes, nobody, none of that stuff. Okay. Well, I, I don't want to turn this into a, a, a seminar on Docker. Um, Docker, and I'm going to just introduce it. Um, Docker, and this is, this is just a very simple definition of Docker. Docker delivers software as image packages that contain all required dependencies, so the image is platform agnostic. The image is open in a virtualized container, uh, leaving the OS and source image untouched. Um, it's just a, it's containerized software that runs independently. Um, this was my first, I, I'm a Linux guy. I've been using Snap for a long time. Anybody, no one's using Snap either. I've been using Snap for a while. Snap is pretty standard on Ubuntu now. Um, Snap packages come down from Ubuntu and, and they contain all of the dependencies that they need to run. Um, and it's a nice feature that Ubuntu has been pushing. Um, Docker is sort of the cross-platform version of Snap. It's available on for Windows, um, Mac, and all of the Linux distribution, and, and it's great. Um, I, I first installed Navidrome as a Linux process, ran into some configuration issues with it, and jumped into and asked a question out on the, the, the Navidrome GitHub page. And I got the response I got from the software developer was, why aren't you using this on Docker? Um, so I went back to the drawing board um, to figure out how to use it on Docker. And what came out of that was a, a, an initial understanding of Docker. And I'm now a fan of, of Docker. And I'm going to ex explain Docker kind of kind of simple, simply. I hope this doesn't oversimplify it. But in, in Docker, um, to start out, you, you, you write or you start out with a Docker compose file. Oh, it's a YML um, config file um, that you put in a folder. I'm going to sort of run through my process of doing that in a second. Um, but, but you run that YML file, and the YML file reaches out to communicate with every time you run the YML file, it communicates with the Docker Hub out on the web. Docker downloads an image of the software and then runs that image in a software container that contains all of its necessary requirements. And then that container gets instructions from the compose file on where your media is and, and config other software config options um, and then spits that out as a web interface. Um, and it it's Pretty solid. Like I'm pretty impressed at how well it works. And this is a, a seminar piece unto itself. And I, I would love to do that. Unfortunately, I'm not an expert on this, um, but I, I like it quite a bit. And I conversation that my, my father and I have been having about this is that um, Docker and containerized software is sort of the, where computers are operating systems are moving. Um, there seems to be a, a a big explosion of this stuff in the last couple of years. And I, I honestly feel as if, at least in Linux, that's where we're, we're going to. If you get on Fedora's website or Ubuntu's website, um, they now have, uh, they're, they're calling them immutable operating systems, um, that all of the software on that particular version of Fedora is containerized. Um, so it's just a click of a button and you're back. You're going to reset your computer and reset things back to square one. Um, so it's a nice feature, I think, that they're, that's being developed. Any any of the software can go back to square one. 
Um, installing it on both Linux and Windows is fairly easy. Windows, there, Windows and Mac, there is a Docker desktop, which is a, a, an .exe file that you download from the Docker website. Um, on, on Linux, it requires you to uh, install it. Um, all of the all of the Linux uh, distributions have a um, repository for Docker that you need to add, um, and, and it's pretty easy. I, I'm not going to go into that. Um, just if you just Google Ubuntu Docker install or Fedora Docker install or whatever you're running, um, you'll get pretty quickly you'll get instructions on how to install Docker on your system. Once once Docker's running. Um, this is the process that I went through, and no, no one is really clear in the Docker universe how they want you to do this. But this seems to this seems to I've now done this twice, and it seems to work pretty well. Um, creating a, a a local Navidrome folder, um, I created a services folder on my Linux distro on both Ubuntu and Fedora, um, and then created a Navidrome folder. Inside the Navidrome folder, I you create a blank Docker compose file. Um, and then that file contain will contain all, all the instructions that you need. Uh, don't worry, you guys aren't going to have to read this. All, all the instructions that you need um, to run Docker. And I, the reason I'm putting this up here like this is this is it. This is the whole config file. Um, and this file in that YML format will reach out to Docker and grab all of the stuff that it needs to run. And it's just just a, a one solid image file. And I'm just gonna show you, break that down into a couple different parts, um, just so you can see how to do it. This is all on the Navidrome website. Um, so don't worry about copying any of this. Um, just quickly, it, it initially points out to, um, out to the Docker website, this Julian Navidrome latest. This is, this is meant to go out to the Docker hub and pull down the latest Navidrome. Um, it sets who the ownership of the software is. It defines what ports it wants the computer uh, to run it on, and then it keeps it running. That's what the last piece of bit is. And then there's quite a bit of software environmentals, and it's set, the second part is the environmental and volume specifics. Um, and, and I'm not gonna go through each one of these, but th this is the software uh, config information, and it gets pretty, Detailed. There's probably about a hundred. This is just a picture of the page from the Docker website. There's probably about a hundred of these. Um, this is my config file. These are the ones that I chose. There's some stuff in here on how it, how it, how it sets up and scans for the database. Um, I can allow or disallow sharing and or rating. This is how I, I let my users engage with this because I share this whole server out with friends. Um, I, a number of friends that use this, like their Spotify. Out in the out in the universe, um, and then there is a uh, volumes piece that tells where on my computer it wants Navidrome to look for music to put into the database, and and that's it. That's the setup. Um, once you run it, there is a, in Linux, and this is, it runs a little bit differently in, in Windows and, and Mac, but for Docker and Linux, there is a, a, a program called Docker Compose that looks for the Docker Compose .yml file. It, it's just simply a, a run docker compose of backslash or forward slash, or slash D, um, and it immediately reaches out to the Docker website, downloads everything it needs, and sets it up and running. And then you can engage with Docker. Uh, it, it's very much a virtual uh, machine, even though it's containerized. You can engage with it much the same way you, you can get um, through a Linux app. It's, uh, a separate virtualized Linux distribution. You can pass commands to it that are Linux, that are more, like, more or less Linux commands. Uh, Docker PS minus A gives me all of the, the Docker images that I'm, I'm running. The PS slash A or, or minus A is the, is the uh, same as, it's the Linux that you can look at all your processes from. Um, on my computer right now, I have now the drum running, and, and I, this is something I've recently got into. If anyone wants to talk to me afterwards, please. Uh, Grafana, which is a great system management tool um, that runs on Docker. And then I can just pass a restart to the to the container image ID, and it immediately restarts my Navidrum ser service. And once it's running, um, you access it through the web port. Um, I'm going to point that out to you guys in a second. It's, it's 
50 36 or 55 36 i think um on the, on the port but you get a very nice login and that leads you to your music software server um this is mine if you go to coacharnold.org this is what you get um quickly as a windows install and windows I don't so much use Windows, so this was a journey for me to get this rolling, and, and this worked pretty well. Um, Windows wants it, or Navidrome wants to be run as a service, which gets a little complicated with Windows. Uh, there's a nice piece of software all out there called the NSSM, which stands for the Non-Sucking Service Manager. Um, you can download it, and I have the link on here. I, I can give anybody the link if they want it, but it's just nssm.cc. Um, takes you to their to their web page. Um, and you pass uh, a bunch of NSSM commands once you've installed NSSM on your computer um, to it about Navidrome. First, you're telling it where Navidrome is. Um, secondly, you need to give it some admin rights on your computer so it can run. Um, and then lastly, you set up some information on how you want it to run logging. Um, and then you start it in Windows as a service. And all, all of this is on the Navidrome website, so don't, so don't think I'm going too fast on this. And then it brings Navidrome up and running on your Windows computer. And this runs, I have this running on a, I have Navidrome running on a, on a tablet in my bag. Um, it runs very well on Windows. I don't know. I, I keep my Linux computer running 24 hours. Um, a lot of people don't keep their computers on all the time. And what's nice about the way, the way that it works with Windows or the way that it works as a Windows service, it just comes right up and doesn't seem to be shakable. I, I, I've not had any issues running with it. I, I can leave my computer on for a week and start it up and it, it's running fine. Um, and then lastly, in, in Windows, the next part of running Windows, it's running it as a service in Windows, um, is you need to create a file much like the YML file uh, for Linux. You need to create a TOML file um, for Windows, and you create a Navidrome folder in Windows kind of in the same way, um, and download, you have to specifically download the Navidrome exe into that folder from the Navidrome GitHub page. Um, and then you set up this config file. And I'm, I'm going to quickly go over, the, over this. Um, and it's just mostly environmental stuff. Um, I have a UI, a UI uh, welcome, um, set some log information. I'm setting the path to my music folder um, as well. If you don't have it set up, I, I didn't need this on my computer, but I, I installed it anyway, um, and it works very well. I put FFmpeg into my um, into my path on Windows, and I and I tell Navidrome where it is in case it needs to do some transcoding that the Windows OS doesn't want it to do, um, and, and this works very well. And then lastly. Um, on that config are a number of uh, environmental instructions on it. Same, same as with my Linux version of this, the envir environmental stuff. I, I'm using Last.fm on it, and, and Navidrome ha has great Last.fm uh, integration. Is anybody, anyone familiar with Last.fm? Uh, Last.fm will scrabble. Um, that's their, I, I think Last.fm, I feel like that's their verb. Um, that's the, ver the only word that I know that's f familiar with. Scrabbling means and anything I listen to, it sends out the data to last FM and keeps a record of it. So I, I and, and that, some people that may, that may sound scary. Um, I, I, I like it. Last FM keeps a list of everything I've listened to for the last 10 years. And I can see my, what I've listened to the most, see my whole, my whole history. Um, and, and, and what it does as well is it allows Things that are in that, that interface with it, Navidrome does does it. Logitech Media Server does it as well. Um, it allows for automatic mix creation. So on both my Logitech Media Server and Navidrome, I can tell it to create a mix, and it looks out on my music, what I've listened to for the last ten years, and it knows what I have, and it creates a mix based off that. And it, it's a nice feature. Um, I, I'm I've been talking about trying to keep stuff. Free. Um, I will share with you. I pay three bucks a month for for Last FM access, um, and, and it's nice.
Um, and again, on, on Windows, on that, on that install, um, there, it's the same configuration as for the Linux stuff. There is probably about 30 or 40, maybe even 50 configuration um, choices that you have. On, on, in this instance, I'm allowing, the, the syntax is a little bit different for the TOML file. Um, I'm allowing for sharing. Um, I'm allowing for people that are that are looking at it externally uh, to download from me. Um, there is integration with Last Brains, which is similar to Last FM. So I'm, I'm disabling Last Brains and I'm enabling Last FM, and, and then I have my key for Last FM. Um, and then once that's up and running, um, it, it again it's the same same login screen that you get for Linux um, and here we go with Navidrome. Um and, and it's a nice, like I say, it's a nice piece. I'm gonna go through the whole software. I set up the PowerPoint. I didn't think that we were gonna have internet access. So I set this up to run through a couple of things, but I'm gonna actually jump over to my demo here. So you guys can take a look at it. Stop the slideshow. Hopefully I didn't just kill everybody on Zoom. I, um, okay. So this is now, this is my server, um, mine. And if I just click on an artist that I want to play, um, I get the choice. I can download this file and I can share it. Um, it will bring up a dialogue, um, but it, then it will create it that I can pick some. There are some choices that I can have on it, but then it'll bring up a custom URL and then I can share this whole album out with anybody I want. Um, it doesn't allow a person with this link to log on to the whole server. Um, but then as well, I, I have a, a number of users set up. Um, these are just folks that I allow to access my, my music. Um, and I can, I can get into some fine detail with, with this stuff where I can limit the, the transcode ability that these folks have. Like I can limit the, the bandwidth that they're using off of my computer at home. So if I want to limit them to 64 bit, or I'm sorry, 64 K uh, or 124, 128 K MP3, I can. Um, and I, and I do with some folks, but I know they're not listening on anything other than their phones or, or their computers at work. Um, you know, it will also, Navidrum will also, another feature of it, it will also allow you to Put your own personal radios in here if you have a number of internet radios that you can share out through it i i don't use this um it, it, it's a nice feature if you if you use a lot of internet radios you can you can consolidate them in here in, into into navidrome um and navidrome the, the feature i think that i use the most is just allowing it to pick random random pieces of music um externally what this does and I'll just play something real fast. So this is well, this will now reach out to my server at home. This is now transcoding down from lossless flack to 192 mp3. Um and it's it works pretty fast. It's pretty fast. Like I pretty, don't, don't have too much lag with this either. I'm pretty pleased at how well it works. I know my phone it works almost as fast. Um just off, off a regular 4G. Um, I don't have I, I, I don't have a whole lot of 5G around around by me where I am, and, and, and so I don't experiment a whole lot with that. But it, I'm assuming as phones are getting faster, this is getting smoother and smoother. The phone the phone apps also a nice feature that they they do is that they'll download three or four files. In advance, so it it has a pretty extensive buffer. So as you go in and out of service, it's it's just reading off your it's reading off the buffer that it's set up for itself, um, which is nice, and that runs well. Quickly, I'll bring it back up. I'll bring the slideshow back up. And it's it's set up in the config file to run on port. When you first install it, it runs on 
4533. That was, I think that was, that the number? I think that was the number that I said. Um, and lastly, it, here's some consider, just some considerations in terms of installation. Um, it, I, I haven't done it. Um, I did a little bit of research on it, and most folks say that it will run just fine on a Raspberry Pi. Um, on mine, I have it pointed to a couple places on my network, so it runs fine across the network. Um, in, ter in terms of grabbing where it's grabbing music from. Um, it, if we're talking about Lash, I mentioned DAT file um, before for my talk from last year. Um, this doesn't mean it, and this isn't for, for anybody here, because if you didn't do that, you're not running DAT file. It doesn't run on the DAT file server. Um, DAT file, as an OS, rewrites itself, the whole, the whole operating system, when it updates. Um, so it would, it, it would see out of drums as, as an invader. And delete it. Um, I have so far installed it on Bungie 24, 24, Fedora 39, and, and Windows 11, and it works great on all of them. Um, the, the only downside or the struggle that I, that I have or had with Navidrome, and it took me a little while to figure this out, um, it doesn't like um, it, it doesn't like more than one media folder, and there's a whole lot of, of discussion on GitHub about this. Um, it doesn't, it only supports one media location. So you have to get into linking stuff. And I, I found on Linux um, that it doesn't like standard Linux soft and hard links. Um, and I, I mean, I just, for a couple hours, I banged my head in the wall on, on this particular topic. Um, it, and what I discovered um, just through trial and error was that it, it works very well on a mount bind Bind mounted um, folder, um, so I, I have all all my media folders in my in my FS tab now. Bind mounted to the subsonic media folders. I'm sorry, the, the Navidrome media so, folder, so it looks at it, and that and that works well. Um, I haven't had any problem with it since, and I, I've been running it now. I've been running this now for probably six months, um, and it's great. Quickly. And lastly, and I'll, and I'll tell you, all, all of this stuff that, I, that I'm talking about on here is, is out on um, navidrome.org. Um, just to reiterate, when you first start this, it's running on port 5, 4533. Um, how, how I run this, um, I, I have a web address that I, that I got for me that points to my local machine. Um, I didn't get into real complicated, and somebody else in here can probably tell me a whole lot more about this. Um, I didn't get into a whole lot of complicated hosting stuff. Um, my router is a TP-Link router, which I'm sure some a lot of you have in here. And TP-Link has a nice piece on their routers where I can I can direct um, the URL the, my URL to me. So I, I have CoachArnold.org, which directs right to my my TPS link, my TP-Link router, which works very very well. Um, and then lastly. I just threw up some of the clients. These are phones, screen images from my phone uh, on a couple of the different clients. Um, this is the generic subsonic version. Um, Tempo is the one in the middle. Um, that's the one I'm currently using. And, and these all have, they're all pretty similar. Um, they have some different features. I, I, I like the way Tempo is working out. It seems to be a little bit faster and a little bit snappier than the, the other applications. I don't know what they're doing in software to make it faster, but it, it's definitely working faster. So on the router, it, it does its own DNS. Um, so it points out, it, it'll allow me through a TP-Link account on tplink.com or whatever um, to set up a redirect. So, yeah, yeah. What I what I get is what I am is um, it's I, for me. It's Coach Arnold. It's Coach Arnold link dot com, and I, I put the port in, and and then I on the on my web uh, Mama URL management company. I I have it redirected to the TP Link address, um, and, and it was pretty easy. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't know a whole lot about web hosting, um, and this is just the, this was just the the route that I went through. Um, I'll, I will confess to you 
that I ran into some brick walls setting up security on this. I'm going to get in trouble with trouble somebody in here. Um, go, go ahead. When you book your when you book your house to a internet provider, right. unless you're paying a lot of money, you don't get a fixed IP address to your house. Right. So your IP address changes. That lets his router upload the current IP address for the router into, and, and it fakes a hard IP address. So when it gives that call there, it's updating this current uh, IP address for that. Yeah, dynamic DMS. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't get to explain all that. I, I apologize. Yeah. But I, I, and I, I will tell you, Subsonic, and this goes back to the original piece of software. Subsonic, and this is like I said, this goes back to 2009, 2010. Um, when they started that, that guy allowed you for five bucks to buy a URL. So I have, I, my URL was subsonic.coacharnold.org. Um, and that's all I needed. Um, I didn't have to get into, you know, he's got, the subsonic guy's got a server running somewhere that does all that redirect back to my house. Um, subsonic but the software had had some pieces to it that phoned home once every ten minutes to give it to give my IP address. And again, there's a security issue in here that you wouldn't want to put it on your hospital computer. Um, Dynamic DNS has its advantages. We're on we're on fixed IP for our external. But I, I, I found on, on this, you know, because that was what kept me on Subsonic for a while, too, was I, I don't really want to go to any of these alternate versions of Subsonic because I don't want to have to punch in, figure out what my IP is, change to that day, and, and punch that into all my Subsonic stuff. Um, what this allows me to do... You know, when I when I got into Navidrum, I, I set out to just sort this out and figure it out correctly. So I bought the I bought the URL for me, and I set the redirect up, up for it, and out works really well. Um, and again, I'm getting way off off off, off target here. This is not something I'm this is not something I'm an expert at. This is just how I've set it up to be usable for me, and I I enjoy it like this. Yes, I have. Um, I, I, it is, it's very similar. Um, the original Subsonic, the guy wanted it to be compet competitor flex, or to plex, rather. Um, and it allowed video over, I think, version 1.5 or whatever of Subsonic started the video piece, and it allowed video transmission over the Subsonic API. Um, and then he got rid of it because um, it didn't work all that all that great. Um, so I mean, Plex does work similarly. I, I don't have a lot of experience with with Plex um, in terms of interfacing with music on your phone. Does Plex allow you to do that quite as well? Okay. I know some folks who use Plex and really like it. You, you pay, I think it's a one it's a one time fee for Plex and you have a you have like a subscription service and also a one time fee. Um yeah, and, and I apologize. I, I haven't mentioned Plex at all or Plex uh, at all. Ooh. R -S -O -O -N. Mm -hmm. Have you heard about that on for um, Yeah, I, 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 I don't address Audio I, I don't know a whole. I, I know a bunch about Rune on an internal network. I don't know a whole lot. Of, I know it does. I don't know a whole lot about it in terms of sharing externally. In fact, I I, I, I have a buddy of mine that swears by Rune, um, and he's actually the same friend of mine who's using my Navidrum server to listen to music on the go. Um, so I, I know he's not he's not able to use it externally. Are we? Are you kicking us out? Uh, um, sir. You mentioned Logitech Media Service. I, I run both of them, yeah. Well, Logitech Media Server I run for in the house. Um, and Navidrome I run I run for external. Um, 
Logitech Media Server. Well, I can't access my Logitech Media Server externally, nor, nor, I don't, nor do I think I would want to, because um, it doesn't have the feature of uh, transcoding down the, the ver versions. Or, I'm sorry, transcoding down the uh, audio format. Um, and that's really the killer piece of Navigrum. Um, I, I'm waiting, I was actually waiting for somebody to ask, why not use this in your home? And that, and and the only reason I can tell you is it's it's a quality issue. Um, but you could also tell Navidrome not to transcode to run the native uh, the native format. Um, it would get a little bit, I think it would get a little bit complicated when you start using it to DAX and to more um, high res audio systems. Because um, I don't really believe Navidrome or Subsonic were ever really meant to be high, high res compatible. There's no question of what's happening to the, I mean, I, they want, it wants to dare transcode. There's no question in terms of internally what's happening to the audio signal. So if you had three files, it's not doing anything. You're correct. So I mean, if, if everything is MP3 on your system, you, there's no reason why you couldn't run this in your house and, and have it be great. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I was just wondering why. Yes. Yeah, no, because because Logitech Media Server, it's a sound quality issue. Um, I mean, it really is. Like, I'm running high res flax and waves and DSF files, and, and I don't, I honestly wouldn't want to put that stuff through Subsonic or Navigator, you know, because it runs my my Logitech clients, you know, output to pretty good DAX, you know, into DC stereo stereo equipment. It's, it's honestly, it's just a it's quality issue, sound quality issue, and, and if if you Wanted to get into that debate, you would ask me, have you done a set, an A-B test on the both of them? And my answer would be no. I, I haven't, I haven't, um, just to the Logitech Media Server works fantastically. Um, well, I, I run it too, but that's because I have your squeeze box right here. Squeeze box touch. You're, you, are you using any computer-based clients for Logitech Media Server? Or are you running into any sort of stereo stuff? So you're just, you're, you, using all squeeze. I, I, I run something called the Snake Oil Server. Does anyone even know what this is? No, um, Snake Oil is a, it's an ad, a, you basically it's something that you install on Ubuntu Server. Um, and it, it uses Logitech Media Server as a backend, but it's got some pretty, uh, pretty techy tweaks. To, to make the sound better, um, not the least of which is it allows for uh, an enormous number of high-end DACs to be connected to the, to the computer. Um, so I'm running that in my, across my house. Um, so I got a pretty good stereo in my living room and a pretty good one. My bedroom and a pretty good one in my basement. So it all that all is in that in that network. Um, I would. It, 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 I, I would highly recommend if you're if you're interested in exploring stuff, take a look at Snake Oil Server. Um, it's a great it's a great piece of software, and the installation of it's easy. It's just a it's just a fair install of Ubuntu and, and a Ubuntu server, and then a script that installs the whole thing on the computer. Um, it's fantastic. Yeah, and DAF file is the same same thing. The reason. I did DAF file last year and talked about it. Is that DAF file sort of killer app is the the CD ripping piece. Like DAF file runs headless, just allows you to drop CDs into it. It puts them all into a folder, catalogs them, and feeds them to Logitech Media Server. Um, DAF file is another great piece of software. I, I don't doesn't have quite the audio file tweaks that Snake Oil has, um, which is why I use a new. But and I get and I'm just very touchy about my stereo. I just get real into sort of some specific stuff, um, and that's just me. So there's no reason why there's no reason why you would have to go to any of this stuff from your Logitech Media Server in your house. 
Um, but if you want to get it externally, that's really the killer app instead of manager. So I have a soccer question. You said every time you start the Netflix server, it goes up and then it's a fresh copy. No, it, it, and that's, it's kind of, kind of confusing. What, what happens, and I, and I didn't really want to get into explaining that in detail. I'll go back to my, my diagram. Um, actually, I'll go back to, to my, so um, when you run it, it's running as a service. Um, and, and, that ser and that service, here's the ID for that service. And go back to the, the, the diagram. So it's it's running as a service, and even if you restart your computer, that con that container that you generated in Docker, it stays in place even even after a reboot. Um, it, it will only update itself when you run the Docker Compose file again, um, and you don't need to. As that container lives, it's living on the computer, and it's not going to change. It's not going to touch um, to update. To update, and somebody who's a Docker expert will tell me there's a different way to this, but to update Docker, I'm mean, sorry, to update Navidrome or any of these Docker things, what I do is I just pass a restart command to the container image. Um, I'm sorry, not a restart command, I take, take that back. I stop the container image and delete it. Um, and then I rerun the Docker Compose YML, and that's what rewraps Reaper. Reaches out to the Docker Hub and downloads the software. Um, as I've discovered now, um, most of sort of the larger Docker software is on the Docker Hub, um, but there are a few other Docker repositories out there, um, I, and I don't, I don't have a real full understanding of how that ecosystem is being run. Um, because Docker is, a, at the end of the day, Docker is a company. Um, I'm not. Don't quite quite kind of understand from an economic point of view how Docker decides who's there, who's not there. It seems to be 100% open source. So I know a lot of corporations are using Next Six and Seven and some getting some money. Some. Um, is there any other any any other questions? That, you know, if anybody wants to talk about, about this stuff, and, and please, I, I will tell you my. Money. My email um, and any of this stuff that I put up on here is on navidrome.org. But if you want, if you want this PowerPoint um, or you want any of the information that I've had in it, um, please don't hesitate to, to give an email. Coach Arnold Gmail is my, is my email, and then navidrome.org is their website. Sorry.